this is called a two cherries that's the brand veneer saw you notice it has curves on the blade that's meant for you know when you're cutting you kind of rock the saw so that you're using the teeth in, in different areas um, this saw will cross cut it no problem but um, I do find because the teeth are a little bigger that I like this uh, particularly for ripping for cross cutting I have this other saw here. This is made by uh, Chestnut Tools in, uh, well, it says Almonte, Canada, or Almont, Canada, which is near Ottawa. So that is a Lee Valley product, or Veritas Tools um, also runs this uh, line of tools called Chestnut. <clears throat> this one has extremely fine teeth. I find it a little too slow when ripping, uh, especially with really hard species of wood. But for cross cutting, I like it because it's very delicate. Generally, cross cuts, if you're cutting too aggressively, you can crack the veneer, like split it as you're cutting. Um, so I think I might try this one if, if the blade's long enough to get past this fairly thick guide block here. So I'm just going to hold this down firmly, kind of angle the saw in a little bit, and we're just going to cut through. It's going to take multiple cuts. I'm kind of going like this as I cut, starting with the back teeth and kind of rotating onto the front. And you can cut through, you know, 10, 10 veneer sheets at, at once this way. I mean, not at once, but one by one, they're gonna come loose. Okay, so I've gone through the first layer there, but not here. Okay, there it is. And now move on to the next one. And since everything's oversized, if I somehow made a mistake and came over here, I've got room for air. Okay, so that is cut through. I've cut right into that MDF. If the saw is too aggressive, sometimes, especially at the end here, you might split the wood. Um, if it's only split for a few millimeters, it may not matter. But if I split a whole piece off three inches long, maybe I needed that. Okay, so those are the only two pieces we're going to keep. Of course, you don't throw these away. You put them back in your pile of veneers, and there's going to be some kind of project where you can use it. Just wet the one end. Run it through on a wet sponge. It's kind of like, feels like wallpaper, you know, when you touch wallpaper with... Uh, Wallpaper glue on the back. Yes, yeah, so you can imagine if you didn't have the holes in the tape, you can actually miss the joint line by a lot and not even notice. They also have another type of veneer tape I didn't mention that is more like normal tape. In other words, the back is already sticky and you just lay it down, but it sticks too well and it's hard to get the residue off. And then you have to kind of well, for, for one, you have to take the tape off fast after you're done veneering, whereas this could be left to dry for days and then I can take it off. And sometimes I have to use lacquer thinner to try and get some of the residue off. And I just eventually I decided it was not worth the trouble. Okay, so we're going to flip both veneers over. And... Oh, sorry, before I do that, let me just hit it with the iron to dry the tape off a bit. If you have a whole bunch of these joints to do, you might want to just put the tape on one joint and then iron it. And then do the next and then iron it. Because when you dry it really fast with the iron, it does seem to shrink a little bit better than when you just let it air dry. From the point where you start rolling the glue on the first side to the point where it's in the bag with the vacuum, I would say maybe 10 minutes or so. So, you know, it's kind of quick, but it's not that bad.
because you don't have full control over how veneers could slip in the bag, that's why it's so important that both the substrate and the veneers are oversized. Very, very important. Sometimes I have to veneer things that are already final size, sometimes, but I dread it every time. Okay, now this has to be preferably not hanging over the edges because this will go on the top side in the veneer bag. Water again. And because there's so much moisture in here, that's why it will never fully dry in the veneer bag. You have to pull it out and let it finish dry. Okay. Now we have to get it in the bag here without dis disturbing the veneers too much, especially the bottom one. That awful sound is just the breather mesh catching on the corner of the veneer. That's fine. Okay, let's get this cart out of the way. So the project has to be on the platen, under the breather mesh, and I prefer not under the valve, but Remember, there was really no reason for me to glue both sides simultaneously. I just thought I'd show you once. But I would be much more relaxed if I was just doing the bottom side. Take it out of the veneer bag 45 minutes later. And then do the other side separately. And then you can really relax a little bit. I've got my pump here ready to go, all pre-charged and everything. Let's turn it on. <clears throat> 